The Mystery Series, Ancient Writings from God's Holy Word. I am so excited because the Lord has told me to give you what He has given me since I've been in here in Shadaway now for over three years. The mysteries of His ancient word, the Holy Bible. You're going to learn with books like Jasher that is mentioned in Joshua, the book of the seer Nathan, the book of Enoch, and the Bible mentions this. Learn about Joseph's life, imprisonment, the details of his divine romantic engagement and marriage to his wife Aseneth, Enoch's actual translation and ascension to heaven and what happened to him after he got there. Hear also the astounding account of the 200 angels that fell, known as the Watchers, who married natural women on earth and had intercourse with the daughters of men. This is what released the Nephilim or giants on the earth. And the most thrilling thing of all is the ancient mysteries about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Learn mysteries on so many other men and women whose lives are recorded in the Bible. To register free, call 1-877-THE-GLORY. Welcome back to week 16 of phase two of the Ancient Writings Mentorship with Apostle David E. Taylor, The Life of Enoch, The Prophecy of the Flood. This week, we are studying how Enoch was shown a mighty vision of the heavens quaking when the great flood of Noah's time would be released in the earth. Enoch gazed upon the Ancient of Days as he sat on his throne of glory, where ten thousands upon thousands of angels stood around him. As Enoch beheld the Almighty Jehovah, great trembling seized him and he fell upon his face. Michael asked Enoch why he was overtaken with fear and explained that Jehovah is merciful and long-suffering with those upon the earth and that the day of punishment has already been prepared for those who do not worship, deny righteous judgment, and take God's name in vain. Michael went on to say that day is also prepared for the elect that are in covenant with him. You will also learn more of what was revealed to Enoch about the coming Savior and how the sons of men would worship and put their hope in and petition mercy from Jesus. He also saw that the righteous and elect being saved by his great mercy. Listen now. And I looked and turned to another part of the earth and saw there a deep valley with burning fire. And they brought the kings and the mighty and began to cast them into this deep valley. And there mine eyes saw how they made these their instruments iron chains of immeasurable weight. And I asked the angel of peace who went with me, saying, For whom are these chains being prepared? And he said unto me, These are being prepared for the hosts of Azazel, so that they may take them and cast them into the abyss of complete condemnation. And they shall cover their jaws with rough stones, as the Lord of spirits commanded. And Michael, and Gabriel, and Raphael, and Phanuel shall take hold of them on that great day, and cast them on that day into the burning furnace, that the Lord of spirits may take vengeance on them for their unrighteousness, in becoming subject to Satan, and leading astray those who dwell on the earth. And in those days shall punishment come from the Lord of spirits, and he will open all the chambers of waters which are above the heavens, and of the fountains which are beneath the earth. And all the waters shall be joined with the waters. That which is above the heavens is the masculine, and the water which is beneath the earth is the feminine and they shall destroy all who dwell on the earth, and those who dwell under the ends of the heaven. And when they have recognized their unrighteousness, which they have wrought on the earth, then by these shall they perish. Chapter 55 And after that the head of days repented, and said, In vain have I destroyed... And after that, the head of days repented and said, In vain have I destroyed all who dwell on the earth. And he swore by his great name, Henceforth I will not do so to all who dwell on the earth. And I will set a sign in the heaven, and this shall be a pledge of good faith between me and them forever, so long as heaven is above the earth. And this is in accordance with my command. 
when I have desired to take hold of them by the hand of the angels on the day of tribulation and pain because of this, I will cause my chastisement and my wrath to abide upon them, saith God, the Lord of spirits. Ye mighty kings who dwell on the earth, ye shall have to behold mine elect one, how he sits on the throne of glory and judges Azazel and all his associates and all his hosts in the name of the Lord of spirits. Chapter 56 And I saw there the hosts of the angels of punishment going, and they held scourges and chains of iron and bronze. And I asked the angel of peace who went with me, saying, To whom are these who hold the scourges going? And he said unto me, To their elect and beloved ones, that they may be cast into the chasm of the abyss of the valley, and then that valley shall be filled with their elect and beloved, and the days of their lives shall be at an end, and the days of their leading astray shall not thenceforward be reckoned. And in those days the angels shall return and hurl themselves to the east upon the Parthians and Medes, they shall stir up the kings, so that a spirit of unrest shall come upon them, and they shall rouse them from their thrones, that they may break forth as lions from their lairs, and as hungry wolves among their flocks. And they shall go up and tread underfoot the land of his elect ones. And the land of his elect ones shall be before them a threshing floor and a highway. But the city of my righteous shall be a hindrance to their horses, and they shall begin to fight among themselves, and their right hand shall be strong against themselves. And a man shall not know his brother, nor a son his father or his mother, till there be no number of the corpses through their slaughter, and their punishment be not in vain. In those days Sheol shall open its jaws, and they shall be swallowed up therein, and their destruction shall be at an end. Sheol shall devour the sinners in the presence of the elect. Chapter 57 And it came to pass after this that I saw another host of wagons and men riding thereon and coming on the winds from the east and from the west to the south. And the noise of their wagons was heard and when this turmoil took place, the holy ones from heaven remarked it, and the pillars of the earth were moved from their place, and the sound thereof was heard from the one end of heaven to the other in one day. And they shall all fall down and worship the Lord of spirits. And this is the end of the second parable. The third parable. Chapter 58 and I began to speak the third parable concerning the righteous and elect. Blessed are ye, ye righteous and elect, for glorious shall be your lot, and the righteous shall be in the light of the sun, and the elect in the light of eternal life. The days of their life shall be unending, and the days of the holy without number. And they shall seek the light, and find righteousness with the Lord of spirits. There shall be peace to the righteous in the name of the eternal Lord. And after this it shall be said to the holy in heaven that they should seek out the secrets of righteousness, the heritage of faith, for it has become bright as the sun upon earth, and the darkness is past. And there shall be a light that never endeth, and to a limit, number of days, they shall not come. For the darkness shall first have been destroyed, and the light established before the Lord of Spirits, and the light of uprightness established forever before the Lord of Spirits. Chapter 59 In those days mine eyes saw the secrets of the lightnings and of the lights, and the judgments they execute, their judgment. And they lighten for a blessing or a curse 
as the Lord of Spirits willeth. And there I saw the secrets of the thunder, and how, when it resounds above in the heaven, the sound thereof is heard. And he caused me to see the judgments executed on the earth, whether they be for well-being and blessing, or for a curse, according to the word of the Lord of Spirits. And after that, all the secrets of the lights and lightnings were shown to me, and they lighten for blessing and for satisfying. Listen now to this week's testimonial that Apostle David E. Taylor has prepared for you, a great prayer meeting. Here Seneca described the treasures laid up in heaven as well as jewels that are secured through great diligence on earth. Learn that Seneca was welcomed by Job, Methuselah, Abel, Noah, and many other ancestors of the human race. Hear how when Seneca met the Lord, our gracious Redeemer, face to face in heaven, a deep sense of awe filled his heart and mind. Learn that as David plays the harp, Paul and Silas's voices can be heard singing above the chorus. Hear about Seneca being introduced to Elijah, Daniel, and others who were persecuted for the gospel. Listen now. The Public Praise and Worship Gathering Meeting in Heaven After Moses' departure, I and my friends from Russia we walk a short distance, towards a remarkable set of buildings that Moses pointed to me not long ago. They were amazingly huge, massive, stupendous and grandiose, they occupied the entire neighborhood between two avenues that seemed cubical. There was a large inscription at the entrance of these facilities. It was written, treasures laid up in heaven, as written in Matthew 6:19. do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, the your heart will be also. We took some time for visiting the place, we were moving from one place to another admiring wonderful treasures, which God's people have secured for themselves. These were the economy investment and heritage that God's people has managed to store up in heaven, but there are also many blessings that some have rejected and which could have been obtained by consistent efforts during our life on earth, because we discovered that multitude of gemstone, jewelry, pearls, and beautiful clothes were abandoned as a result of the way of life of the saints on earth. These celestial jewels, pearls and precious stones could have been have easily gained by serving the Lord, and they would have contributed very much to the wealth of the redeemed in the heavenly kingdom. I will tell you more about that on another occasion. After we left this high place of symbols which is a shrines of holiness, we were told that not far away from here, there was a place where the great congregation of the multitude meet and assembled for public worship and praise, and that there are many hundreds of similar places of public worship and praise scattered in different parts of the celestial city, then I said to my friend from Russia, let us go there for once, because since we left the Judean Golden Gate we have not enjoyed congregational worship and praise. As we went out of the door of the sacred shrine into the street, we noticed the whole boulevard was literally crowded and invaded by thousands of happy souls on their way to the great praise service. Then we heard the strains of music, it seemed far in the distance and yet we can hear it quite distinctly, it was the orchestra of heaven and we could not wait to get there and join them. We were in the middle of the multitude of believers in the street heading to the praise and worship service. I took an opportunity to ask one the redeemed who was a resident of heaven about it, as he seems to be perfectly acquainted with the surroundings. I asked him if he could tell us about the order of the service and the chances of getting a convenient place to seat. He replied that comfort is provided for everybody, then he asked us, have you never attended the praise and worship service before? We said this is our first time, we just arrived in the kingdom of heaven, he said, then you will be welcomed, and you will be invited to a more prominent seats, you will have better opportunities of learning the way we worship in heaven, because newly arrived believers are always brought forward and introduced to the great multitudes, and they are given the best seat, so you will feel perfectly at ease. We thanked the man for his kindness as we felt a sense of relief. Just at this point, two celestial chariots came sweeping along. 
in which were seated many of the Jewish patriarchs and prophets, and also the apostles of Jesus. Then I noticed that each of them had a harp in his hand, and then I saw someone with a large stringed instrument. He stood up prominently among them, I said, Who is the man whose face is beaming with glory? Several believers in the street heard my question, and they spoke at once, and they said to me, You have sung his songs and psalms a thousand times, just guess who he could be. I did not need to be told, I knew it was King David, then someone signaled the driver of the celestial vehicle to stop. Then David himself invited me and my friend from Russia to sit with him in the heavenly vehicle, we then took seats in the chariot by his side, the celestial vehicle then rolled silently at low speed, I introduced my friend from Russia to David, we are glad to welcome you my sons to the holy city and also into this chariot, said David. I see you are going where we all are going, we are joining the largest gathering for praise and worship to our Redeemer. I said to David we are very happy to go with you, because we know very little about how to behave and how to worship here. David then said whatever comes from your soul will be pleasing to God, I see you have your harps with you. Have you learned to use them? He asked, oh, yes I replied, I have been practicing some new hymns we sang at the entrance of this celestial city, and at the gate of the city, but we used to sing your psalms of praise on earth, as well as the song of Moses. But when I heard the first strain of music of heaven I concluded that we did not know how to sing on earth. In fact since I entered heaven I am so amazed at the environment and what surround us that I got absorbed in conversations. Then I said to my friends from Russia, what a blessing to be here. And to realize that we are in the midst of the prophets of God that we so often read about in the scripture. At this realization my friend from Russia fell on his face in adoring and giving praise to God and David could not withhold his fingers from the strings of his harp, in a moment the whole chariot was sounding with the sweetest music of all the ages, because the champion and the sweet singer of Israel greatly improved and perfected himself in praise and worship, as we were moving I scanned the faces of people in the street, then I caught the glimpse of one, which I soon recognized as Abraham, you remember, I met him back at the sea of glass, the crystal river, I stepped toward him. He recognized me and he shook my hand with enthusiastic greetings, and he said, let me introduce to you my son Isaac, and Jacob as well, I know you often read stories concerning them in the scripture, I said to Abraham with emotion, so is this your son whom you offered on Mount Moriah? Is this Jacob, the chosen of God, who wrestled with the angel and prevailed, how blessed to meet you all here, very much like a dream when we used to read the record of your lives in the scripture. My soul is full of glory and praises to God. I am so happy meeting you here, you have been here for long ages but I have just arrived, there are many things I would like to ask you, and I trust we will have a talk soon. In fact I can remember a passage in the scripture which never made little sense to me until now, our Lord once said that many would come from the east and the west and they will sit down with Abraham. Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, thank God this scripture is fulfilled for us. I bless God for his great salvation, then I said to David, now we must be near the great gathering place of the mighty hosts because I can hear the music clearer and very distinct, indeed we are, said David, look around and behold, then I rose and stood upright in the chariot, with one hand on David's shoulder and with the other I held my harp, to my great astonishment as far as the eye could see, I saw countless of crowds gathering, and everyone was dressed in the purest white. The orchestra of heaven was still practicing and singing some of the most lovely songs human ears have ever heard. My soul was in a perfect state of rapture and bliss, the location of this great gathering was a huge amphitheater, the architecture this oval building that looked like circular auditorium was designed entirely by our Lord. It's part of the things he had gone to prepare for us, all the seats were beautifully upholstered, and the floors were carpeted with exquisite taste, people found their place without noise and without discordant sound. Then I asked David, is the Lord here already? No doubt he is here, answered David, and he will be seated in the center of the multitude, and all the newly arrived believers will be invited to seat close to him, so that he can give them a fresh welcome and present them to the congregation. 
these souls that have been redeemed and washed by his precious blood has to be shown to the host of heaven and the saints, but this group is just a small portion of those who have recently crossed the portals of heaven and the gates of the heavenly city. All the newly arrived souls were gathered and grouped, from the four corners of the amphitheater. They stepped towards the center of the amphitheater, where our Lord Jesus Christ was sitting on an elevated throne, visible to all the multitude of the assembly of the great host. He arose and with most loving words gave us a very kind greeting, a deep sense of amazement and wonder filled our minds. Because we knew that we were standing in the presence of the Almighty Creator, the Gracious Redeemer, we felt a great joy when he uttered his words of welcome, full of love, then the Jesus Christ raised his hands, we all saw the marks of the nails which were visible on his hands and on his feet, he did not need a sermon to stimulate our feelings of praise, and before we were given further introduction, we all prostrated in adoration and praise for the Redeemer, we knew that this glory was a result of his precious blood shed on the cross and his death on Calvary on the cross. In a few moments we all stood on our feet again and we received another gracious welcome by our Lord. His words were most tender and loving, and the welcome he gave us was so sweet and full, and we all felt perfectly at ease, and we felt at home with all the rest of the great congregation, and we all praised God together. Many thousands of angels were among us, they are the one that transported us from the earth into the heavenly kingdom. They seemed to rejoice with great joy that we were safely home, in the bosom of God. At that time David arose to his feet, and with him many prophets, patriarchs, apostles and ancient servants of God. The song of praise was announced, and the whole congregation having harps of God in their hands stood up, we all joined together, and we sang the song of Moses and the song of the Lamb. The chorus was this, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of Saints, Revelation 15 verse 3, David's harp played that day as it had never played on earth before. The Apostle Paul and Silas stood side by side, and their voices could be heard distinctly, above the voices of many, if only the church on earth could catch the inspiration and life of this heavenly worship, there would be few empty congregations, even where there is no preacher. When the worship service ended the great multitude of saints began to disperse, and they went back to their occupation in heaven, as they were scattering in all direction, and we had the opportunity to meet many men and women who had lived far back in ancient times of the earth, and we had good dialogue with them, but there were many saints who remained behind long after the great congregation of the multitude had dispersed. Many of them were so filled with the glory of God that they seemed to be holding a kind of after-service, which I found was glorious, this happened often on earth during the great periods of revival. The Spirit of God will be so present among people that the congregation often has difficulty to leave the places of prayer, among people who stayed after this public praise and worship gathering were men who lived in ancient times. They were singing a lot of very old songs, we could recognize the particularity of wording, and they were referring frequently to events, times, and places of far gone period, and we could tell that they were ancient men who had lived in a far and remote period of time, although they looked as youthful and full of vigor as any of us who just arrived at the city, their manner of speaking allowed us to say they were men that lived long ago, I was attracted by their seriousness, their enthusiasm, their particular behavior, on top of kindness and sweet characters, everything invited us to go sit in their midst, I said to my friend from Russia, let go talk to them and ask them who they are, and they welcomed us in their company, we found ourselves sitting in the presence of Job and Methuselah, Abel and Noah, with many of the earliest ancestors of human race, they all seemed full of vigor and life with no marks of old age, like we knew so much in the world. I then quickly thought of the words of the angel to John, Behold I make all things new, Revelation 21 verse 5, these were earliest of the race of man, we had a long but very pleasant visit with them asking them many questions concerning the early history of man on the earth. Adam and Eve were the first creation of man in the image of God, we arose to bid them goodbye, then they embraced us with an affectionate kiss and said, we'll see you again. Then I and my friend from Russia retired to a quiet place, 
we sat down to discuss things we are seeing on heaven and the testimony we just heard, because we were deeply impressed by the words of these men of antiquity. I asked, what is the meaning of eternal life? If four thousand years have produced no trace of weakness on these ancient men, nor dimmed their eyes, nor cooled their love and ardor, surely it is certain that eternity will never do. In this place there were many souls coming and going, and everyone had such a sweet and holy temper, and a disposition with such pleasant smiles of loveliness that bespoke eternal satisfaction and contentment. I said to Bohemond, I have been thinking about a number of my old friends and relatives on the earth, if they only knew what we know now, they would lead very different lives and seek to be ready for this solid glory. He replied, I almost wish myself I could return for just a few days and tell my own people about the great realities of this heavenly kingdom. I myself never thought it could be so real and so grandiose, as we were talking the multitude of the great congregation had nearly all gone, but David's celestial vehicle was still parked near the entrance where the hosts gathered, then we heard a beautiful and heartbreaking music. Then we cast our eyes through the great archway toward the chariot and we saw David beckoning us to him. We went swiftly, crossing the long aisle, but when we arrived near David's celestial vehicle, we discovered that it was full of holy men of antiquity. Then David said, We noticed that you were alone, and we thought you would like to come with us to a great praise service for the children to be held near the Judean gate. Without hesitation, we gladly accepted his offer, saying, we were on our way to the throne, but we will be glad to go with you as we don't know the city very well. Then the apostle Paul said to us nicely and with love, Well, dear brothers, I have been here for more than eighteen hundred years, and yet I know but little of the city, although I have been to many sections of it again and again, our inheritance is exceedingly great, so don't hurry, eternity is before you. The vast plains of heavens and all the riches of the eternal city are yours forever. Well, said David, come aboard and sit next to Paul and me. These brothers that are at the back will be happy to talk with you. The four men at the back of the chariots stood up. Then we were introduced to Elijah and Daniel, who are very famous in heaven on account of their devotion and service to God on the earth, and a man by the name of Artorias, of whom I had never heard before. David said he was from southern Mesopotamia. He is a descendant of Shem, and one of Abraham's soldiers, in the battle at Hobah in the King's Dale, and there was also John, the beloved disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, whose name is a household word in all the world. Well, brethren, I said, is it true that we are here with those who have lived time ago on earth? The idea of immortality and a future life which we cherished so dearly in the world has proven more than a dream. Oh, how good it is to be here. There are so many things I want to ask you concerning the ancient period, but my soul is so full of glory and praises to God now, I cannot restrain my feelings. David said, you need not try. Silas arose from the front of the chariot and came and stood by David's side, while they sang a most lovely song. My friend and I fell on our faces in the chariot and we worshipped God, David led in the singing of the hymn. The chariot was moving slowly along. When we finished singing David said to his rider, You may drive past the children's polytechnic, and let our brethren who have just arrived to see what our Lord has prepared for the little ones of his kingdom. So, turning to the right, the rider guided the celestial chariot slowly for we had many things to talk about on the way. The avenues of the kingdom of heaven are really broad and particularly beautiful. We passed many gushing fountains, and groves of the trees of life. There was neither shadows nor sun to heat the city, I said to Paul who was sitting next to me, it's really great to be here next to you. It seems almost too good to be true, I saw many painting of heaven on earth but it failed to illustrate what we are experiencing here, Paul said it is impossible for man to conceive of this glory while in the flesh. The Lord once gave me a glimpse into paradise while I was in the world, the glory was beyond my power to describe, I said to Paul, I have often wondered how it occurred, for we have a brief account in the scripture on earth which you left concerning it, 2 Corinthians 12 verse 2, I know a man in Christ who fourteen years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether it was in the body or out of the body I do not know God knows, he said, well, 
while at Lystra in Lyconia I was stoned and dragged out of the city as dead, but God raised me up, and with the help of some brothers we went back to the city. But that night I could not sleep, being restless and burdened with the word of the Lord, I arose and all alone, I went out of the city to pray, I climbed the side of an old volcano mountain, I was helped by an angel who held my hand, at the top of the mountain one of the rider of the celestial chariot, the driver of light appeared to me at my side, I was so enraptured by the presence and glory of God, and I was in wonder and I was overcome by the glory of the royal chariot and the driver, that I hardly could tell whether I was dead or I was in a vision. The sight of the royal chariot and the driver was glorious, but I soon found myself prostrated in this heavenly vehicle while we were climbing high above the columns and the pillars of heaven. Then I heard strains of music that came from the third heaven, it was the new song that a mortal man like me had no ability to repeat. I opened my eyes and I, I glanced at the crystal river, the sea of glass, and I heard a loud voice proclaiming the mystery of the trees of life that stood on the shores of the sea of glasses. It was the closing words of a sermon delivered by Moses to a vast company of believers that have arrived in heaven. As I was told by the driver afterwards, Moses was giving them information that they could not know while under the law and subject to an inferior dispensation. We only stayed a moment in heaven, and then the heavenly vehicle raced at the speed of sound in the direction of earth. After some time the old city of Lystra presented itself again in my view. At the foot of the mountain, in the light of the full moon, the city shone in all its beauty with its streets and domes, but people were still asleep. Then I jumped out of the celestial car, while the angelic driver politely said goodbye to me waving his hand. A moment later, he was gone. At the top of the mountain I continued to pray and praise God until daybreak. As long as I was in the flesh, I could never really tell whether I was released from my body or if it was my body that was taken away in the glory. After this experience, I always had the great desire to go back and stay there forever with go and be with Christ. I could never forget the words of Moses' sermon and the strains of music could never be forgotten, but these were an element of strength in my life during the many afflictions God permitted to come upon me. I said Paul I remember the words in your epistle, for me, living is Christ and dying is gain. But if I go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. So what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better indeed. Then Paul said had I known all the bliss and glory of the celestial kingdom, as it is, I could not have been contented. However, having received so many revelations of his will and so many manifestations of his power, this put me in danger of being overly exalted. But God always knows how to deal with us for our greater good. There was a man who showed me the most bitter anger, he was really for me as a thorn in the flesh, he was a messenger of Satan. But then the grace of God, as in all circumstances was enough for me. Then I said to Paul oh, thank you so much for your words. It seems as if God directed you to give me this little bit of your experience. I have often wondered what the thorn was to which you alluded in the epistle. Yes, said Paul, but this messenger of Satan, as well as the prisons, scourges, bettings, betrayals by false brethren, and sufferings of earth, only worked for my good. I am so blessedly free from them all now. The contrast is so great it gives me an eternal appreciation of the blessing of this kingdom. Listen now to an amazing message from the special teaching ministry of Apostle David E. Taylor. In this teaching, you will learn the extraordinary love of God, highlighting the unique nature of Jehovah's love, distinct from Jesus. Drawing from personal experiences of encounters with Jesus and God the Father, he emphasizes the profound depth and transformative power of God's love. Apostle Taylor unveils the significance of understanding the distinctions within the Godhead, Jehovah being greater than Jesus, and advocates for believers to develop a deep, intimate relationship with God like Enoch did. He ties this discussion to the impending days of Noah, asserting that the world today mirrors that era, emphasizing the necessity for preparation and intimacy with God before the anticipated return of Jesus. 
Apostle Taylor underscores the importance of faith in pleasing God and presents Enoch as an example of someone who pleased God through faith, ultimately being translated without experiencing death. Listen now. The first thing that is the foundation in this walk with God that Hebrews tells us about Enoch, it says, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. And that goes in our spiritual walk with God. If you don't want to see death, even spiritually, walk with God by faith. Faith is the key. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. And it says, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. How many of you want God to take you? How many of you want God to say, this person pleased me so much that I, I'm going to take them from the earth? I'm going to just take them. Nobody's going to find them. I'm going to come on earth and walk with them, and that walk, I'm going to take. Hallelujah. How amazing. Do you want to be took by God? Do you want God to come and take you? How intimate is that? How beautiful is that? Listen to this. For he had this testimony that he pleased God before his translation. And he says, without faith, it's impossible. Please God. So in order to get into this walk, with God. God requires you to develop your faith. How do faith come? Faith come by hearing and hearing the word of God. Like you're listening to me now, faith is rising in your heart about walking with God like me now. See that? You got to hear the rhema word of God. You got to hear the word of God preached. That's what it says. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, hearing by the rhema voice. That means when the word, the preached word, when the word is spoken by the Holy Ghost through a man or someone, or through a voice in a dream or what, however, faith comes by you hearing something. So if you wanna please God, learn to hear the word. Keep your ears around the word of God. Keep your ears around hearing scriptures spoken by anointed men and women of God. That is the first step to your translation on the clouds. That is the first step to walking with him. And I know for many years I've been walking in faith, pleasing God in that way. But it talks about God loves people who walk in faith toward him. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, faith worketh by love. Love is greater than faith and faith can only work by love. So you gotta fall in love with him. And I've been teaching you that for years, the love relationship. So now in order for this translation intimacy to happen, you gotta walk in faith. If faith pleases God, then unbelief or lack of faith angers him. You gotta get that. Cause people don't think of that. But if you look back, look how God responded to the children of Israel when they were in the wilderness. And he had, the Bible says, when they saw him split the Red Sea and he did miracles, then sang they his praises and they believed him. But then would God allow something challenging, negative circumstances or challenging circumstances confronts them, they start complaining. They start getting afraid. Oh, God brought us out here to die. They start charging God foolishly. They started thinking negative about God. And let me tell you something, unbelief is never positive. It's always negative. Faith is always positive. You gotta stay away from around negative people. People who got a negative mindset and they don't have faith, they cannot please God. And what did he do to the children of Israel? What did he say? You will know the breach of my promise. Moses even interceded and threw himself before God for them to stop the judgment. And God said, no, they will know the breach of my promise. He says, I'm not going to kill all of them because he told Moses, stand back. I'm going to kill all these people. I'm going to start over with you. But Moses said, no, block me out if you have to. 
But God said, okay, I'm going to do as you have said, but as surely as the Lord, surely as I live, the, the earth shall be filled with my glory. See, this is about God's glory. God is about glory in this last hour. He says, surely the earth shall be filled with my glory. He says, and all these people have done this, I'm going to let them die in the wilderness as they have spoken in my ears. You got to know how God, how serious your unbelief is before God. You can never have a testimony that you please God without faith. Haku, repele pokushai, bekele pokoye. That is impossible to please God. It's impossible to even think you're going to pleasure him without faith. What is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen is when you believe God has done it. And you not only hope for it, you pass hope for it. You believe you got it, even though you don't see it. We walk by faith and not by sight. If you go by your eyes and everything that comes up every day in your life and everything that you see negative happening, you can't please God because you're walking by your eyes. You're walking by sight. The only way God can bless you is you got to have faith beyond what you see. And you got to believe God has given it to you no matter what it looks like. Without faith, it's impossible. Stop being negative. Stop complaining. Stop being negative. Stop complaining. Believe God. He loves the people who rejoice and who sing his praises and walk in faith. And believe him beyond insurmountable odds. I don't care if you've been struggling with sickness for a while. God can heal you. I don't care what's been taking place. God has it under control. You got to believe he only believes the best for you. He only has the best for you. And he got things prepared. Oh, shit. Can't tell you who he is. Hallelujah. That he wants you to have. I love you. He loves you. Each week, I'm going to give you a key to walking with God like Enoch did. Oh, there's so many. Oh, this is deep. I'm just starting the ancient. I know a lot of you, you said, well, we've heard about faith. Yeah, but you got to understand this is how he, this is how it started. And he done it. He had the foundation. You got to get this foundation stronger in your life. Some of you still don't have it. You're still full of a lot of negativism. negativism. You're still a lot of when when challenges come you when god tries your faith you fail at pleasing him the bible says when the son of god come on earth shall he find faith on the earth he's looking for your faith he's looking for your positive expectations toward him my old bishop g patterson who was my pastor for many years he said these words faith is positive expectation surrounded by negative forces when negative forces come against you and you start getting despondent and you don't have no faith or positiveness that means your faith is gone you ain't pleasing god that's why every time warfare come against me and people persecute me my faith arise because i know that's a test and that's my time to show god i trust you if when circumstances come against my life that are negative. That is my moment to show him how much I love him, to please him by my faith. You gotta quit complaining. You gotta look at every negative circumstances as a moment to prove to God you love him by showing faith, not getting negative. That displeases him. He wants to know, do they believe me in the midst of this? Do they trust me in the midst of this? Can they hold on and know my love in the midst of this? When things don't go your way, when circumstances all around you are saying you won't survive another day, can you still say like the song? In the Bible, there was a story where God's people were being attacked by another bigger army and the Bible says when they heard the negative news their hearts were moved like with the wind 
And God told them, he said a word, he says, if you will not trust me, you will not be established. The Bible says their hearts, all the men's hearts were moved, just like when the 12 spies and the 10 came back with an evil report and the whole congregation, it says, a negative spirit fell on everybody. That's why you gotta be watchful who you let in your, that's why you need to stay out of people's, uh, uh, letting them gossip in your ear and speak negative against other people. You don't know what God got for those people's lives. You're stupid to think God is going to listen, listen to your negative report against somebody when he got a positive report. But more than that, when an attack come against your life and you hear something negative, even if it's in dreams, even if God has said it, he's still testing you to see do you have enough faith to take correction and endure it so you can change and overcome. By faith, you overcome. But it says they heard a negative report and their hearts were moved like the wind. In other words, they got afraid. They started distrusting God. And God sent a word, if you will not believe, if you will not trust me, you will not be established. This war will overtake you. You know what? I got to find it. I think I think it's uh, y'all should be looking that up for me already. OK, it's Isaiah seven, nine. Isaiah seven and nine. Yeah, here it is. Listen to this. Isaiah seven and nine, but verse two says, and it was told the house of David saying, Syria is confederate or allied with Ephraim. See that? And his heart was moved and the heart of his people as the trees of the wood are moved with the wind. You see that? They got afraid. And then said the Lord unto Isaiah, go forth now to meet Azah, thou and Cherub, thy son, at the end of the conduit of the upper pool in the highway of the fuller's field. See this? And say unto him, take heed and be quiet. Fear not, neither be faint hearted for the two tails of these smoking brands for the fierce anger risen with Syria and of the sons of Ramelah. Because Syria, Ephraim and the son of Ramelah have taken evil counsel against thee saying, let us go up against Judah and vex it and let us make a breach therein for us and set a king in the midst of it, even the son of Tabel. Thus said the Lord God, it shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. So you skip to verse nine, it's the key verse. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria and the head of Syria is Ramelah, son. If ye will not believe, ye shall not be established. You shall not be secure. That's what that means. You will not win the war. The Bible says this is the victory that overcometh the world, overcome anything, our faith. If the devil can get your faith, he can get your victory. He can steal wars you're supposed to win. He can steal treasures and promises from God you're supposed to come into. You got to hold on. You got to keep faith. You got to keep positive expectation when you're surrounded by negative forces and negative news. Don't ever let nobody shake your faith. Don't ever let no one take it. Hallelujah. If you will not believe, if you will not trust me, you will not be established. I don't know what you're facing. A lot of you are facing different things today. And you want this walk with God like Enoch had, but you got to please God with your faith. You understand? Trust him today. Know that he has everything under control. He loves you. I love you. You are called to be God's elite warrior. Join God's mission to bring healing, deliverance, and salvation to America at David E. Taylor's Arena Miracle Crusade. Starting in Orlando, Florida, this life-transforming crusade will be arriving in arenas around the country, but only your partnership will help make this possible. Become the elite warrior God called you to be and help God bring the kingdom back in the 21st century. 
Be one of the first 5,000 elite warriors who sow just $240 a month for 12 months and get your name on the wall of fame honoring those who support God's mission. David E. Taylor will also personally pray a prayer of increase and blessing over you each and every month. You'll also get huge savings on empowering resources, free dream interpretation, access to special events with priority seating, exclusive updates, and so much more. Your generous love gift also helps demonstrate the love and grace of God by bringing food, clean water, and life-changing provisions to precious families in need through our worldwide outreach ministries. The sick healed, lives changed, souls saved. It's time to do your part and join this crusade as an elite warrior of God. Call our 24-7 Miracle Prayer Line at 1-877-843-4567 and become an elite warrior and receive all these exclusive benefits while helping to fulfill God's mission of healing and salvation across America. Answer the call and become an elite warrior today. The Mystery Series, Ancient Writings from God's Holy Word. I am so excited because the Lord has told me to give you what He has given me since I've been in here in Shadowway now for over three years. The mysteries of His ancient word, the Holy Bible. You're going to learn with books like Jasher that is mentioned in Joshua, the book of the seer Nathan, the book of Enoch, and the Bible mentions this. Learn about Joseph's life, imprisonment, the details of his divine romantic engagement, and marriage to his wife Asenath, Enoch's actual translation and ascension to heaven and what happened to him after he got there. Hear also the astounding account of the 200 angels that fell, known as the Watchers, who married natural women on earth and had intercourse with the daughters of men. This is what released the Nephilim or giants on the earth. And the most thrilling thing of all is the ancient mysteries about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Learn mysteries on so many other men and women whose lives are recorded in the Bible. To register free, call 1-877-THE-GLORY. 